Hello, hi, it's Henry the Computer Guy, and you welcome to our lesson number eight. And in this lesson, we are actually going to be looking at the computer types, all the types of computers that we have. And uh, in any way or whichever task that you're having or you're going to work upon, you have to know the type of computer that you will need to help you accomplish that task specifically. And they are telling us that computers can be broadly classified by their speed and computing power. So it depends on what you actually want to do, then you'll be able to choose the type of computer suitable for that activity. Okay, let's continue. They are telling us that they are given below starting from the smallest type to the biggest. We are first of all going to give a list of them, then we shall explain one by one in detail. The smallest and the first computer that we have most commonly used in today's or day-to-day -day businesses is what we call the microcomputer. At times it is called the personal computer because it is used by only one person. Then we have the workstations which are somehow similar to the microcomputers but more than the microcomputers, more faster than microcomputers. Then we have what we call the mini computers, at times called in the mid range, because they fall in between the micro and the main what? Main frame computers. Then we talk about the main frame computers, or at times called the big iron. These are closer to those that are fastest, which are the super computers, lastly. So these are the types of computers that we are going to be talking about in details. Let's continue. Explain each or each of these is explained below. Let's begin with a personal computer or microcomputer. What is a personal computer? The reason as to why they term, to, they term them as personal computers is that they can only be used by one person. It is not all that faster. We can use it, for example, surfing the web typing some documents, opening some emails, can use it to play music, etc. So they're telling us that it is a single user computer system having moderately powerful microprocessor. It is the most common type of computer that is being used by some of the people. Some of the examples, we have what we call the desktop computers. We shall see how some of them look like with time to go. We have the tablet PC or tablet computer. We have the palm tops. These ones are supposed to be held in the palms. We have the smartphones. We have the notebook or the laptops. We have the netbook. Actually, the difference between a notebook and a netbook is that a netbook is somehow smaller compared to a notebook. So a notebook will do many of the tasks compared to a notebook. So a netbook is smaller compared to a notebook. We have personal digital assistants. These are all examples of our personal computers. NB, they are telling us that Notebooks are ultra portable, lightweight computing machines, while notebooks are sophisticated portable laptops. That means that the notebooks are all that bigger in size compared to the netbooks. And all the tasks a notebook does are all more than those ones compared to the ones the netbook can as well help us to accomplish. NB. Netbooks have basically less powerful hardware installed compared to the, not, to the notebooks. Let's see how they look like. This is a notebook, for example, a laptop. Then we have what we call a netbook. It is somehow smaller in size compared to a not what? A notebook or a laptop computer. Then we have what we call a personal digital assistant. It is meant to be used. In. It is very small. You can use it to note some items that you feel like. 
That is a personal computer. So specifically a personal computer is that small. Not all that small, but used by one person. It is a single user system, having more moderately a powerful micro processor. Not all that fast. So we use these ones in our day to day businesses, making calculations, storing our results or documents or records. These ones are the most commonly used computers. We continue. And this is how they look like. For example, we can have the desktop, we can have the tablet, we can have the notebook, we can have the netbook, we can have the handheld devices, for example, the smartphones, etc. So you can help me add some examples onto that. We continue. We come to what we call the workstation. Remember we said earlier that a workstation is faster compared to a personal computer. They're telling us that it is also a single user computer system, which is similar to a personal computer, but have more powerful microprocessor. So that means that a workstation is also single user, but more powerful than a personal computer. It is a special computer designed for technical or scientific applications. That means that if a computer or if a task is supposed to be done by a computer with a faster, moderately faster microprocessor, then we have to go for a workstation. They are telling us that a workstation is generally designed to perform intense processes such as 3D animations, those people who design the animations that you always watch over the TVs. The computer aided design. They use computers to design sophisticated, sophisticated, let's say, photographs. Houses of plans of houses. They use those faster computers. Data analysis, video editing, because into that video editing, we need to render. So we need a computer which is moderately faster. Compared to a personal computer like a laptop, that is generally adequate for less resource-heavy tasks such as browsing the web, checking, checking mails, typing up documents. So that means that a workstation is a single-user computer that is more powerful than a personal, a personal computer. Some of the examples we have, we can have the IBM Intel Station Power, the ThinkPad Power Series, the Apple Power Mac G5, the PowerBook G4, and others as you do your own work, your own research. Let's look at how they look daily clean the diagram. So this is what we call a workstation. It is single user, but more powerful than a personal computer as we saw earlier. We continue. Let's talk about what we call a mini computer. And we say that these ones can as well be called the mid-range mid computers. And they're telling us that a mini computer is a class of multi-user computer that lies in the middle range between the mainframe computers and the smallest single user system. So that means that it is it lies between the mainframe and the micro computer. They are capable of supporting hundreds of users simultaneously. That means that it can support more than one person. They are similar to mainframes, but they are smaller in size. These are like some of the characteristics of uh, the many computers. They support limited number of peripheral devices connected to them. They don't allow many, too many devices to be connected to them than a what? Than a mainframe. They have lower speed, have lesser storage capacity, and support fewer number of users at the same time compared to the main frame. Examples. We can have this Inspilon 1012, the HP Mini 110, the Samsung Tab, the Apple iPad, Apple iPhone Galaxy Series, and others as you're going to be adding on 
when you're making your own research. We continue. This is how the mini computers look like. Where do we actually use them? For example, we have a campus. We can use this to connect computers in different departments. It can help us to connect all those computers in the different departments in a campus. Let's continue and look at what we call the main frame computers. And the main frame computers can as well be called the big iron. These are powerful computers used mainly by large organizations for bulk data processing, such as census and financial transaction processing. For example, the computers that are used in the banks, because they keep data centrally, you have a branch in one area, a branch in another area, a branch in another area, they will collect all that data and store it centrally in one location. The computers released there are called the mainframes. Okay, we continue. They're telling us that they are capable of supporting hundreds of users simultaneously or at the same time. Software technology is different from micro computer or personal computer. That means that these ones are far better than the, the mini and the micro computers and the workstation. So we go on increasing the level. They are also called the central processors because they process data centrally. They keep that data in one location, then process it at once. These computers are used in places where processing needs to be done in bulk. Too much, such as the banks. They can store a lot of information. They support a wide range of peripherals or peripheral devices connected to them. They have many users connected to them via terminals. What is a terminal? It is that monitor with a keyboard used to enter data into a computer. So that means that it will be accessing all those different terminals, but it will store the data centrally. What are some of the examples of these computers? We can have the IBM series, Z series, System Z9, System Z10, and others as you will be adding on your, your research. So they are showing us that we have our computer here, then we have our terminals. I told you that a terminal is having a monitor and a keyboard used to enter data into the computer. All these ones are having the monitors and the keyboards used to enter data to the computer, the side. So this is how they look actually. So the banks use mainframe computers to process the bulk data that they are having in banks for customers. We continue. And look at lastly, the fastest and the biggest type of computer, which is the supercomputer. So they're telling us that supercomputers are the best in terms of data processing capacity. These computers can process billions of instructions per what? Per second. So in one second, they can process billions and billions of instructions. They are used for applications which require intensive numerical computation, such as weather forecast, weapon research. Those are the types of computers that are used in that. They have a high storage capacity and a huge in size. That means that the more bigger they become, even they will be able to produce too much of the what? Of the heat. So they need to be put in air conditioned rooms to always keep on cooling those what? Those types of computers. Okay, they are telling us that they generate a lot of heat and therefore need complex, complex cooling what? Systems. They are supposed to be stored in a room that is air conditioned to keep it cooling because they always produce a lot of what? A lot of heat. If they are not cold, then the components are going to be breaking down. Let's look at them. Most expensive type of computers. These are the most expensive types of computers. That's why you find that few people or few countries, actually few countries, can afford to buy them. Let's look at the examples of these computers and even the countries where we can actually find them. We have the name 
and the country. We have the Tian 1A, which is found in China. We have the Jaguar found in US. We have the Nebley found in China. We have the Subem found in Japan. The Hooper found in the United States. And others, as you'll make your own research. Let's look at how they look like specifically. These are the supercomputers, very big in size. They need to be put in air-conditioned rooms such that they are always constantly cold. Very expensive, support or perform millions or billions of instructions in what? Just a second. So, if you're new to this channel, I beg you to subscribe to it and click the bell such that you can be always notified when a new video is uploaded. So thank you for watching. It's been Henry the Computer Guy. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye. I sign out.